what's up guys welcome back to another video and today we're going to be solving the economics paper one multiple choice uh, and i'm only going to be attempting the questions from chapter one two and three and usually in these paper one questions uh, they're usually the first 10 questions now you can go check on my live stream that is for chapter one two and three i will be maybe releasing in the future for chapter four five six but for now chapter one two and three today we're going to be attempting some past paper questions on those topics. So if you haven't revised them, or if you haven't had a look at them, you can go check out my live stream. It's about two hours and I go thorough with the entire explanation of each topic, um, you know, one step at a time. So with that being said, um, let's just start with the multiple choice questions. So let's begin now. I have several many papers. So we're starting right now with the October, November 2020 paper. And uh, then we're going to be move on, moving on to the second version and then the third version. And then finally move on to 2019. Uh, and, you know, let's see how many papers we can do right now. But we're only really attempting about like 10 questions. So let's see how long it's going to take us for this exercise. So let's move on. The first one is, what is the basic economic problem? So this is like topic one. Okay, basic economic problem. Excess of supply and goods and services. It's actually the uh, opposite. Uh, lacks, uh, lack of profits, uh, that's not something. Recession, that's not. And the answer is D. Okay, I'm going to rub all these X's. Uh, and I'll be explaining why the answer is that. So basically, economic problem is uh, simply, uh, this is a situation or scarcity is formed. And scarcity is simply a situation whereby there's not enough to satisfy everyone's wants. Okay, so consumers have many wants, and uh, because we don't have that much, many resources, economics comes into the picture, and we say this is called a basic economic problem. We, we move on to number two, and it says that on which factor of production does innovation directly depend? Okay, so here the main word is innovation, and it says number one, decisions of entrepreneurs, and I already know that's the correct answer. Uh, so this is a factor of production. Uh, and uh, we have talked about this in the live stream and several other videos. So entrepreneurs are simply risk takers and they start up a business and they must be innovative to survive in this market. Okay, entrepreneurs, their reward is profit. Okay, so you need to also know the rewards of each of the following. Number three, the diagram shows an economy's production possibility curve. We've had a look at PPC curves, and this economy moves from point X to point Y. The PPC curve is simply of the production possibility curve, and it shows the maximum of two uh, possible curves that can be produced at the time, okay? So uh, you can see the two, you know, goods right here, capital goods and consumer goods. What is most likely to affect, uh, what is most likely effect of this change? Because it says it moves from X to Y, so it's moving from X to Y, it's going down. That means that the capital goods are going down and we are having an increase in the consumer goods. Okay, so let's have a look at this. Uh, different quantities of these goods are produced. That's correct. I just said that. I just said that the capital goods will reduce and the consumer goods will increase. So the answer is A. I don't even need to move on to have a look at the other ones. Which person makes macroeconomic decisions? Macroeconomic decisions are simply... Uh, these are decisions that are done by governments, for example, you know, public hospitals and everything. So this is all done by the government. So a bank manager, that is not macro, that is micro. Government is the correct answer. So the answer is B. We move on. What is the function of the price mechanism? We've also had a look at this. The price mechanism simply is uh, used for the allocation of goods and services. And you can see it is A, the price mechanism. It's simply that, you know, if there's more demand for this, we'll allocate more of these goods. The next one, number six, the diagram shows a shift in the supply curve for cars in China from S1 to S2. So from S1 to S2, that is uh, a shift to the left. OK, so that's a shift to the left. And it says, what is most likely to cause of this shift in the supply? So in this case, this is, of course, a supply curve. OK, we need to know that this is a supply curve. And if you look at the factors affecting a supply curve to the shift to the left, you will get your answer very quickly. So shift to the left simply means that there is less quantity. People are not willing to, you know, supply more of this. So an increase in indirect taxes. So indirect taxes and increase in uh, indirect taxes will simply lead to, um, you know, increase in production in in sort of the production but it's not necessary in this case okay an increase in the price of cars um that sh that's actually a shift to the right not just the left 
an increase in the wages of a Chinese car worker? The answer is C for this. Six is C. Okay, when there's an increase in the wage of these Chinese workers, then there will be more supply, okay? Uh, because people are willing to work more. We move on to number seven. It says the price elasticity of the supply for good is two. The price of a good then falls by 10%. What is the effect on the quantity supplied? Okay, quantity supplied. So if the elasticity is two, okay, then this means that the PES is two. That means that if the price goes by 10%, it will respond times two. So that's going to be, it falls by 20%. It can't increase by 20% because this is related to the elasticity, okay, the responsiveness, okay, because when the price of a good falls, okay, the elasticity will, in, will fall too because we know this also from the law of supply and it states that the increase in price will lead to an increase in supply and a reduced price will lead to a reduced supply. So it's, you can also use that knowledge to answer this question. Number eight, it says a German car manufacturer uh, builds a factory in India, a group of Indian workers at the factory join a trade union. Okay, so this is trade union. What uh, what would this trade union be expected to do for the workers? Okay, so these are basically the uses or sorry, what the trade union does. So what does the trade union do? Encourage the workers to bargain? No, they don't deal with the, the workers. They talk um, to the company. Okay, negotiate with German uh, government on tariff reductions for the Indian produced cars. This would not affect how the workers would work, so it can't be this. Promote an advertising campaign to sell more? No, because trade unions are simply formed so that they can help uh, or improve the conditions of a worker. Uh, protect the workers against unfair dismal by the employers. So is this. Now, trade unions only deal with the workers. They don't care about how the business, you know, is how they're sort of producing or anything. They only care about the workers. Okay. Why do women, on average, earn less than men? Okay, why do women earn more? You can say, um, sorry, earn less, they earn less, sorry, women maybe. So you can do this by uh, attitude towards working women. And we had a look at how uh, labor is affected or how workers can be affected. So it's the same thing right here. Women may be less able, that's wrong. Women are able, women are not eligible, nope. Uh, women are, nope. And the answer should be face discrimination, yeah because of discrimination, because uh, they're not accepting, you know, women in the society. That Therefore, they're, they're basically simply facing face discrimination. Okay, so I think uh, that should be this question we haven't learned about income. Uh, so we move on to this one. What can be a central bank increase in order to reduce the consumer borrowing? So this is central banks. We've looked at central banks, commercial banks in chapter three. So uh, how can they reduce consumer borrowing? Okay, consumer borrowing, how can they reduce this? So they can simply do this by interest rates because when there's a high interest rate, why would someone borrow? Because they have to pay more. Uh, okay, so I think that should be it for this. Um, so right here, let's do number 14. When is it most likely that the demand of labor in an industry increases? Okay. When does it likely to increase? When the demand of the industry? Yeah, that's correct. So when the demand of some product increases, that means the labor will also increase. Uh, this economies is also, I believe, chapter um, chapter three. So let's have a look at this. What could cause the internal decent economies of scale for a firm? Uh, so this economy is okay. Let's give an example. Uh, so you know. Each business can have an advantage or disadvantage, okay? Like Coca-Cola, for example, they have so many products that even if one product doesn't do well, you know, the other products will sort of, you know, do better, okay? But if there's one firm only producing one type of drink, and if that does bad, you know, they're going to suffer. So in this case, it says, what causes this internal economies of a firm? So this is basically causes that you just need to know. A fall in the demand, no, this can't be the uh, reason. A merger with another firm results to slower decision making. When you merge, okay, and they nerve slacking, this will lead to diseconomies of the scale. So we are done with this paper. If you guys can see, we've done 15 out of, I believe, uh, 15 out of 30. So that's 50%. And uh, remember, chapter one to three is 50%. So we are done that we move on to the next one okay um now let me also zoom in this one okay we move on this one is the uh 
October, but no, uh, October, November 2020, but this is version 2, so let's do this one. Okay, what causes economic agents to make choices? We've also looked this uh, looked at this at chapter 1, and this one simply states, economic agents basically uh, are related into the allocations of goods and resources. So what causes economic agents to make the choices? Um, limited needs and wants, existence of finite goods. Now, when there's already existence, okay, when there's already existence, you know, we would need economic agents. But we need them because we want, you know, to have a good, like, you know, sort of um, thing. Now, because there is an existence of finite resources, therefore, there will be need, okay? So the answer is B. I don't know why I put an X there, but the answer is B. Okay, because, you know, they are very finite resources, okay, you know, they need to make decisions. Sorry uh, for putting the X, it might have confused you. Now, which combination of the factors of production and its factor income is not correct? Okay, so this is factor production and the factor income. So this is uh, basically the rewards for capital. What is the reward interest? That is correct. For enterprise, the reward is profit. I just mentioned that. That's correct. For labor, is it dividends? No, it's not. For labor, it's wages. The answer is not dividends. So the answer, therefore, will be C, labor. So the reward for labor is wages. Okay, we move on. The diagram shows a production possibility curve PPC for a country. The country moved from position X to Y. So this is a similar type of question. If you have noticed X to Y, X to Y, uh, what is most likely to reason for this change? So X to Y is simply now, you know, uh, reducing capital goods, increasing consumer goods. And uh, this can say firms have decided to increase the investment. Uh, this is actually an outward shift. So this is no... Um, New economic resources have been discovered. This is again another outward shift. The government has bought, um, has brought about an increase in living standards. So consumer goods uh, relates to living standards. The answer should be C, 3C. What is an example of a macroeconomic aim? Okay, to create and maintain full employment. That is actually um, correct. So the answer is A. So the government should ensure that everyone has jobs. We move on to number five. Why might a market economy fail to achieve the best use of scarce resources? Okay, so consumers may lack it. That's already correct, and I already know that. Okay, consumers may lack information on the goods to buy, and therefore uh, we say that market failure has been occurred. Okay, and uh, uh, you can look at what market failure is in the live stream, or you can just search it up. Okay, number six. The diagram shows the global market for copper with an equilibrium point X, okay, so this is the equilibrium point, the equilibrium point is when the demand curve and the supply curve meet, and you can see they've met, which point represents the new equilibrium of the copper producers, cost increases, and there is a rapid global economic growth. Okay, so is it A, D, A, B, C, or D? So first of all, here's the keyword, rapid global economic growth, okay, that means that it should you know, in the price increases, okay, and the quantity remains the same because it says the copper produces cost increases. So therefore, answer is A. Okay, we move on to number seven, and it says the diagram shows the supply curve for a good. Um, what is the price of elasticity when the price rises from ten to twelve? So ten dollars to twelve dollars will read to one forty to one hundred. And remember to calculate price elasticity. Um, Sorry, yeah, price elasticity of supply, you simply do the quantity of a demand, change in quantity. So the change in quantity is 140 minus 100 over 100, and I'm multiplying this by 100. So I'm going to take my calculator and find that out. So 140 minus 100 over 100 times 100 is going to give me 40. Okay, so that's going to give me 40, and then if I do the uh, change in the price so that's going to be the new price is now 12 so 12 minus 10 over 10 times 100 you take your calculator you get 12 minus 10 over 10 times 100 that should give us 20 and therefore when i do 40 divided by 20 i get 2 as my answer so the answer is d we move on number number eight. Which task is not a function of a trade union? A trade union, remember, um, it simply only deals with the workers. Okay, 
So number one, um, agreeing the minimum number to be employed on a particular job. That's correct. Okay. So they do actually involve in that. They need to say that, okay, you know, your business is doing well. Okay. Or, or maybe, you know, you have a big business. You should actually allow more employees to work there. Okay. Deciding on level of the national minimum wage. That is actually wrong. Well, you know, the word national can all be wrong. Okay. They can only deal with the company's wage. Okay. Not the, the national uh, wage. Number nine, what does not have an effect on wages in a free market economy? Okay, so this is dealing with wages and what does not have an effect? Uh, danger levels, that's correct, because if it's more dangerous, then, you know, the wages will be quite uh, high. But then uh, B, government regulations should not matter in this sort of context. Okay, we have not done income yet. Uh, and then right here, we have another question on central bank and says, what can the central bank increase? Okay, this is the same question like the version one. So the answer is the rate of an interest. Um, okay, and I think I believe that's that's it. Uh, okay, but let's, uh, yeah, let's just do this one right here. It says that Firm X supplies bricks and decides to merge with uh, Firm Y. So this is merging. What uh, form of merging this is? So uh, because... Uh, they're supplying the same thing, okay? So when you're ever supplying the same thing, we say this is called horizontal merging. So horizontal merging is when it's in the same market um, uh, and they are basically merging. So let's move on to the third variant and I'm just gonna zoom in, okay? So here is the third paper for October, November, 2020. So this is gonna be the last paper that we're doing. So we have uh, kind of completed the entire 2020 paper and then in the you can comment down below if you want to see some future series like this okay so we move on number one why do consumers have to make choices when spending their income okay so this looks like you know uh, disposable income okay so let's have a look at this one advertising encourages consumers to spend okay why do consumers have to make choices okay so uh, this shouldn't be in a factor uh, Consumers have a no, they don't have, and C should be the answer right here, uh, because consumers want, uh, cannot all be satisfied with the income, so they therefore have to choose wisely. Next, uh, what is the key role of an entrepreneur? An entrepreneur is an inventor, uh, risk taker, shareholder worker, so the answer should be a risk taker. He's not an inventor, okay? He should just, his ideas should be innovative, but it doesn't mean he's an inventor. The answer should be a risk taker. That's the key role. The gram shows the production possibility of a PPC only economy producing at point X. Okay, what would be the opportunity cost for moving from point uh, point X to producing only consumer goods? So they're now producing only uh, they're only producing consumer goods. So they are only going to be producing two hundred and forty consumer goods. Okay, this basically means because of that, uh, what's happening is that they're losing war. They're losing this many amounts, okay? Uh, and remember, it's saying that what would the opportunity cost? Uh, what would the opportunity cost? Opportunity cost is basically what you're forgiving, okay? What you have lost is what the sort of thing is. So now, uh, so remember, it's moving from 70 to zero. That means that it is, they're, they're losing 70, right? Because remember, point X was at 70, 180. Now from 180, they're moving to 240. So you're losing 70. So the answer should be B, um, 70 units of capital goods. Economics, economics is divided into two, microeconomics and macroeconomics. The statement one says that when a price of oil falls, there is an expansion in demand. And statement two says the organization of petroleum exporting countries can influence the price of oil. It says that which combination correctly describes these two statements? So the first one says that when the price of oil falls, falls, there is an expansion in demand, okay? So you can see this is a microeconomics. This is done by private firms, okay? And the organization of petroleum uh, can influence the price. This is also microeconomic. The government is not involving in any. So both of them are microeconomics. So microeconomic, microeconomic, microeconomic. So the answer is D, okay? We move on to number five and it says, what is the disadvantages of the market economic system? Okay, what is the disadvantage of the market economic system? Market economic system, if you guys know, is that when there's government intervention as well as the private firms. 
Okay, so what is the disadvantages? Uh, first of all, entrepreneurs lack incentives. That is wrong. Uh, let me not put in any X so it doesn't confuse you guys. Uh, government intervention will reduce. No, uh, market dominance. That's right. So five is number C. It says that, uh, sorry, less than C. Uh, it says that market dominance by firms can lead to higher prices. Okay, so we say this is called monopoly, monopolistic companies like Coca Cola. Uh, you know, they dominate the soda uh, type of. Um, business and therefore they are monopolistic and therefore they're dominating other firms because and therefore they can decide higher prices okay number six it says the diagram shows the demand curve for coffee in the usa it says why did the quantity demanded move from q1 to q2 so uh, remember this is the change in the supply okay uh, what will re what results to a higher supply uh this could be maybe an increase in price or maybe sorry when there's a you know when something has become much cheaper so the answer should be a okay because when it's cheap it's easy to produce okay so let's move on because this is demand so demand curve simply states that a uh, lower the price will lead to uh, lower demand okay so that's the answer and next let's move on to say number seven in african country with the largest areas of tropical desert the price elasticity of demand for salt is highly inelastic this will result to greater consumer expenditure on salt when price changes from p1 to p2 which diagram illustrates this situation so we have p1 to p2 and uh, this is because there's a greater consumer expenditure on soils when there's a greater consumer expenditure uh, that simply means that uh, price should be high quantity should be low so in this i can see i think d should be answered the price is the highest okay so you can see it's the highest quantity is the lowest number eight in which occupation would wages tend to increase in those where the workers would be paid weekly no in those where the workers need less training no uh because in the more training will lead to more wages and the more you work will increase to more wages in those where the excess demand for labor yeah uh yeah, that should be answer. This is um, tend to increase wages increase in this set of case. Okay. Um, we move on. Which row shows the characteristic of money and functions of money? Okay. So characteristics of money and functions of money. So first of all, it must be acceptable. It must be a medium of exchange. So it's already I know it's number nine a. Okay. So we haven't learned income in chapter one to three. Okay, we move on to number eleven and the answer is again. So you can see number eleven is the same for all. Um, so it's quite well, it's quite funny. Okay, now let's do number fourteen. Which combination is useful? Uh, and found in monopoly. I told you monopoly is when a market is dominated. Okay. Uh, so for this one, it should be many buyers and a single seller. Okay, meaning many people want it, but there's only one market that's dominating. So that's going to be the seller. So there you go, I have finished all three papers. I had a look at the 045511. Um, I had a look at the 045512, and then I also had a look at 04512. So we finished all three of them. So hopefully you enjoyed this sort of type of post paper question video. If you want to see more types of videos like this, comment down below and tell me which sort of series I should do, maybe 2019 next. Uh, and I am waiting for the 2021 papers. And as soon as they are out, I will try to do the multiple choice questions for that. But um, they are not yet out, so I'm going to be waiting for them. So I have finished the 2020 all three variants paper one. I think uh, the next one I should do is 2019 all three variants. So comment down below if you liked such a type of video. And I will see you in the next video. Thank you for watching.